On September 2, 1957, Orville Falbus, the governor of Arkansas at the time, ordered the state's National Guard to prevent the integration of Central High School, an all-white school. Many other southern states followed Falbus's lead in defying integration orders. These measures to prevent integration resulted in the Little Rock Crisis. Three years after this event, much had changed in state interference with integration. This resulted in one critical moment in civil rights history. What do all these photos have in common? Let's take a look at a little girl named Ruby Bridges. Ruby was born on September 8, 1954. At the tender age of six, Ruby helped integrate William France Public School, becoming an important historical figure in the civil rights movement. However, the citizens of New Orleans protested against this, starting riots and taking their children out of the school. Years later, Ruby was asked about her experiences and her view on being the sole student in her classroom. Much has been written about that day, about you and your three uh, classmates uh, spread throughout the uh, New Orleans school system, a couple other schools. Uh, a book was written, a children's book, about that event. And inside the book, it, it was struck me, I was looking at it last night, uh, there's a picture of you, we're looking at now the story of Ruby Bridges, and inside there's a picture of you alone at a school desk in the classroom. Wh where are the other children? Well, what happened, the day I arrived, um, parents rushed in and they took their kids out. And these were white parents. Um, actually, what happened is that they boycotted the school. And so no kids were there at the school. I spent a whole year in the classroom alone with my teacher. What did that feel like? Um, it was, I was really lonely. At the time, my teacher did um, all sorts of things to sort of keep me from feeling that way. But I remember not being able to eat in the cafeteria, not being able to play on the playground. Um, and then those things stuck in my mind. So I know that I, I was really lonely. As a result of white parents boycotting the school, all the students were removed from the classroom. Leaving Ruby by herself, she was often lonely and didn't have many friends to play with impacting her social and emotional growth. When she was older, she showed that she still remembered these painful memories of sitting alone at a classroom desk. When she walked to school every day, things were thrown and shouted at her. This was the anger of the protesters. At the time, she remembered that she didn't know that it was about me. Little Ruby was lonely due to the absence of her classmates and had to endure the wrath of loathing crowds who protested outside of the school on November 14, 1960, Ruby Bridges' integration of the all-white elementary school, William France Public School, paved a path for future integration efforts to be successful. At the age of six, she was the first African-American child to desegregate this school. She broke the barriers of segregated schools and changed the way the schools were set up. She led the way for other schools to be integrated around the world eventually leading to diverse school systems across the U.S. where all people of different color and race were accepted and included into society. 60 years ago, six-year-old Ruby Bridges showed the world that no matter how little you are, you can make a difference. <laughs>